I create custom thinkorswim codes. It's what we do on this channel. You see a lot of them running on this chart behind my head here. I have my own website, daytradingstrategies.net, where you can get access to all of my already created custom codes. But I want to also make sure here on YouTube that I am providing you all extra value for free by teaching you what I know about coding. So today we are going to break down how you can utilize any indicator within thinkorswim into your own custom code if you're excited hit the like button for me and we'll jump into it stock trading indicators are nothing but math equations if i open up say the rsi indicator here this inherently means nothing the relative strength index the computer has no idea what a relative strength index is and it really doesn't mean anything it's just a combination of input parameters and calculations that spit out a result right think of 2x equals 6 in that equation x is equal to 3 right but the parameters 2 and 6 can easily be changed now think of 1x equals 10 now x is equal to 10 right you can change the parameters and change the outcome of any equation and on stock trading indicators that is the same and you can access the parameters of a study from the cog i just clicked on and you can change any of this stuff if you change the length instead of looking at 14 bars which is just the inherent out of the box number that's picked you can go look at a 50 bar length rsi and it's obviously going to look very different once again indicators don't inherently mean anything they're simply math calculations in which the input parameters can easily be changed to morph what the indicator looks like to fit your trading needs these parameters are accessed within code from the parentheses of the function being called got that okay let's move on i'm just joking let me let me go ahead and show you what i mean when i say that because that probably unless you have a computer science degree sounded like chinese if i go ahead and hit create on a study and uh we'll just leave it as a plot for now if i type in rsi open parentheses close parentheses and then i type my semicolon to close this line it doesn't throw any errors here this is your rsi and you have open and close parentheses because it's a function and functions need to intake parameters to work because once again a function a in this in in stock terms a indicator a study doesn't actually mean anything it's just a calculation of its parameters but trey you didn't give it any parameters you just opened and closed a parentheses when you do this when you don't give it any parameters it uses the default parameters so actually these aren't it uh, imagine this says 14 I, I forgot i changed it but 14 70 30 close wilders and no as you can see on your study here you can see rsi open open parentheses all those parameters close parentheses if you don't input anything into here automatically that is what is plotted so if i hit okay now and we uh load oh new study two is on my chart let's go ahead and put i forgot to declare lower but you are now seeing the rsi 14 length right let's go ahead and do it now let's change this back to default just so you can see you are now seeing the same rsi 14 length right all right let's talk shop here let's get into the meat and bones of this video and talk about how you can manipulate input parameters to change how indicators or studies work that fit your specific trading needs right i'm going to jump into my internet browser yes i use microsoft edge let me hear it in the comments it's fine if i go ahead and just google search rsi think script i've already obviously done this in the past if i google search rsi think script this link is going to pop up called thinkorswim learning center thinkorswim has an entire coded handbook for free available publicly that is going to show you everything you need to know about the studies and indicators and really anything you want to call using ThinkScript. So obviously I'm going to go ahead and click on this and as you can see we are in our function library and we are in our studies and I am chosen on RSI and just look this is just R and S and look at all the indicators on here. Anything you want to use stochastic simple moving average RSI si mac d blah 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 anything that comes with thinkorswim as a study or indicator you can find the code page like this on within the thinkorswim learning center so we are on the rsi page obviously you get a description what does the rsi do great this is what we want to look at 
input parameters. Remember earlier when I went over the the default parameters? I don't remember. I think it's 14, 70, 30, close, wilders, and no, I believe is what the what the default parameters are. Well, this is it. And very importantly, very importantly, they are in this order. This is the order that they are in. So you're looking at a 14 length. The overbought is 70. The oversold is 30. The price is closed. The average type is Wilders, right? Now, I'm going to stay with me here a little bit. I'm going to drag this screen sort of back and forth between my monitors. But if I come back into the study I just created where we're simply just plotting the RSI value, I didn't put any parameters into this, right? Remember? And remember, we talked about how since I didn't put any parameters in, it's giving you just these default parameters. And once again, in the order of the parameters that we just talked about. Well, like I did, so sorry, like I did here, I clicked on this cog. I can't do it while this is open here. Let me close this. I clicked on this cog and I changed the length to 50, right? Well, say I want my length to be equal to 50. Remember, length is the first parameter. Since it's the first parameter, it is what the machine is expecting. It is expecting and looking for length as the first thing you type in to these parentheses. So if I just type in RSI open parentheses 50 close parentheses, that is doing an RSI set to a length of 50. If I hit apply now, you will see that now the RSI that I have previously changed to 50 and my code RSI value look exactly the same, right? Because that length parameter changed. Well, I'm not plotting, remember, the next three, or sorry, the next two indicators are overbought and oversold. I'm not currently plotting those. I'm just plotting the RSI value. We're just defining and pulling in the value of the RSI right now. So say I want to change this price parameter. Say instead of using the closing price as the average, I want to use the open price as the average. Well, if we jump back into our code, if I just type in, and you're going to see a, 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 a hidden issue here. If I just type in comma, by the way, extra tip, parameters are separated by commas. So within your parentheses, 50 is your length, comma, going to be looking at your next parameter. If I just type in open, you are not going to get an error here because open is returning a number right? The open of this bar was around like 440 or whatever, but Meta went crazy on earnings. The, 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 the open was something like 440. So this, what it's doing is it's looking at RSI length is equal to 50, but it's now looking at your overbought level being set to 440 or whatever the open price of the current candle on the chart that you're running this on is, right? So that is, is not going to work. Look, nothing's going to change. This, the indicator down here doesn't change at all, right? You notice no change because parameters go in order. The machine is going to read them in order unless told otherwise. So if we want this to be the price, which we do, then we have to go price equals open. Now it is setting your 50 length RSI average from the opening price rather than the close price. And when I hit apply, you should notice a change in this line. Maybe not a major change, but you should notice the line change, right? You are now looking at price equals open. So when defining parameters, the machine is going to read them in the order that they are set in from the Thinkorswim Learning Center or just from the parameter itself. If you just click on this cog, notice these are also the same length, right? Or sorry, these are the same order, right? Length, overbought, oversold, price, average type, length, blah, 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 blah. So you could also do that. You could come into the cog and look, but that is how you instantiate and change variables within a, within a function call to morph morph studies and indicators into however you want them to be utilized. We're going to jump into one more example just so I can do it at sort of more full speed without a step by step by step by step explanation just so you can see how it's done one more time. So say I want to turn on both a 20 and a 500 simple length moving average on my chart. Easy. I'm going to go to studies, I'm going to go to create, and we are going to plot our simple moving average. But 
I don't know how to call simple moving average. Is it simple moving average? You know, and 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 I don't know how to, what the parameters are. So we're gonna jump back into our Thinkorswim Learning Center. I'm gonna look up simple moving average, or you would Google this as we did with RSI the first time, right? You could Google simple moving average think script and click on it. But I see here, okay, simple moving AVG. Is that what I'm looking for? Yes, the simple moving average. Cool. So it looks like the call, I didn't go over this with RSI because it was very simple, but obviously this top line here is your call. So it's called by simple moving AVG. We now have a simple moving average. It's no longer throwing any errors because we've opened closed parentheses. It's just using all the defaults of the simple moving average. Well, I said I wanted a 20 and a 50 sorry, a 20 to 500 simple length moving average, right? So length is the second parameter of simple moving average. So let me do this. If I wanted to create a 20, if I typed in 20 here, oh, I thought that would give me an error. Oh, it's, it's using, it's using price. It's still, it's still going to use 20 as the price. I'm trying to find an example where you get an error when you try to type something in. We'll do that next. We'll do that in another example after this. But um, if I type in 20 here, let's just do it. If I type in 20 and then show you, it's going to give you a moving average that is set to, oh, look, <laughs> look at what it did. Okay, this is funny. This is a funny thing to show. It literally, so it's using the price to calculate the range. By default, that's set to close. So it's taking the average of the closing price over X length, right? Well, since I typed it at 20, it literally just plotted a straight line at 20 because that's the price. That's kind of funny. What the hell, Trey? That's not what we want. Remember, it's the second parameter, so we have to instantiate it as such. We have to type length equals 20. If I now hit apply, you're going to see it. Let me actually get rid of this. Uh, let's get rid of the strategy, my custom strategy I'm running. You can now see the 20 simple length moving average. Cool. I want a 20 and I want a 500. So let's plot, uh, we'll just call it data two. By the way, um, I haven't spoke on this. It's not exactly the point of this video, but plot is how you get something to show up on chart. And then this sort of name you put before the equals doesn't mean any this is literally just what you're calling it you can call it the 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 scoopity doopity for all it matters it doesn't matter what you call your functions right so we're also going to type simple moving avg and then we're going to type in a length equal to 500 close the parentheses always remember close the parentheses always remember to end your code lines with a semicolon you now have a 20 and a 500 length simple moving average and they are automatically set to different colors. Your simple length moving average is automatically the salmon line. That's because, and this is, I don't even know if I want to explain this because it's a little bit complicated, but remember how parameters are uh, instantiated? The color parameter is automatically instantiated to change if there's rep repetition. So without jumping too deep into what that means, that's a really cool function. So within this one study, we now have a 20 and a 50 simple length moving average using length equals right remember because it was the second parameter let's go over one more example that i can find where you get a real error thrown inside the parameter for this last example we're going to jump into a couple of more advanced techniques for changing and modifying your parameters inside of your function so say i wanted to create a function for volume or i wanted to call a different type of volume volume is defaulted to be the last price i want it to be based off of the bid price type Okay, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new study. We know how to do this. I'm going to leave it as plot just for the visual representation. If we just wanted to use volume, like we didn't actually care about seeing this on the chart, we could just define it instead of plotting it. But for the visual of the video, I'm going to keep plotting it. And then we're going to go, uh, as you know, volume, open, close parentheses. We now have our volume. Say I want the volume to not be on the price chart. I want the volume to be down in these lower study sections, right? Well, the first line of your code, you can type declare lower and uh, semicolon. And this will mean that when you create this study, it automatically shows up and it will only show up down here in these bottom sections. So um, that's just a, one more advanced tip you can take. The volume showing weird right now because I haven't changed the way it's plotted. I haven't plotted it as a histogram. The default 
default parameters. The default parameters of plot is line. That's why you're seeing it like this. We're not going to jump into the plot parameters and how to change the way you plot things. Uh, potential future video idea. If you're interested in that, make sure you're subscribed. But um, let's jump back in. So what did I want to change? I wanted to change my price type. We've talked enough about, okay, Trey, I know what that means. Price type equals, okay, defines the type of price for the current volume. So I can, looks like I can either use last, ask, bid, or mark. Okay, cool, Trey, I know how to do that. So I understand now, since it's not the first variable, it's not the uh, variable, actually, yeah, yeah, let's 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 do this first. If I so I know I need to type in price type and then equals bid, right? If I type in price type equals bid, um oh, why is this not working? That's because if you read a little bit up here, and like we talked about earlier, Thinkorswim will have uh, draw downs and click into's rather, should I say, for everything you need on this. Alternatively, you can use price type constants. Okay, price type, I wanted to use bid. Okay, it's a constant, so you can't just call it bid. You have to tell the machine that you are using this constant by typing price type dot bid. You're going to run into this on a lot of different studies that you try to try to use. So that's why I want to show it to you in this video. It's a constant, so I have to do price type. This is instantiating the variable. Let me go back. Let's, 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 let's run through this. Instantiate the variable price type. It's what we've talked about all video. I understand that. Equals price type dot bid because the bid uh, instance here is a constant and not just a not just an out of the box call that you can just type in bid. So a bit of complexity there at the end, but I just wanted to make sure that you all ran into every instance that you will see when trying to modify your parameters inside of your think script function study calls. You now know how to call in any indicator into your think script code and how to modify the parameters of that indicator to fit and look how you desire it to. I, once again, I sell all my own custom codes over my website, daytradingstrategies.net, link at the top of the description down below. But another feature, and a huge one, a lot of people have been making use of this, so shout out you guys that are emailing me probably right now. A huge feature is that you, when you sign up, you also get access to my personal email in the contact us in the top left, where you can then reach out to me and ask me to set up code for you. So if while you've watched this video, you've tried to go, please try it yourself first, obviously. Try it yourself first. If you can't get something to work, if you want a variable to look like something else, if you want to pull a certain type of variable or indicator into your code and you can't quite get it to work right, Reach out to me. I'll try, I'll do my best to help you. Once again, daytradingstrategies.net. Link at the top of the description will give you access to that and everything else that I've already created for one low price. And for those of you guys that made it to the end of this video, I'm going to give you a discount because you guys are really taking your ThinkScript coding seriously. You made it to the end of a what is this 18 minute long coding tutorial video you're taking your you're taking your education seriously so if you use discount code end at checkout on daytradingstrategies.net you're going to get yourself a nice little discount so go do that go check it out we'll see you over there with all that being said that's going to do it for this video but on the outro screen coming up in just a second i will link you all to a video going over one of my custom codes so if you're interested in that click that link now trading stocks he talks about trading stocks. It's important for you Americans and other international individuals to learn about stocks. 